Hello, this is Alan Nesse with another end of tutorial and a case report for treatment decisions involved in treating teeth with failing silver points. Silver point obturation was a staple of the 1960s and 70s obturation techniques, with many cases performed over these two decades. However, their use diminished during the 1970s as gutta percha obturation gained dominance and slowly made competing techniques disappear. Silver point obturation turned out to, be, to have a poor success rate in the long run, primarily due to washing out of the zinc oxide eugenol-based sealers that were used to cement these points, and resulted into leakage and exposure of the silver to interstitial fluids, which then resulted into secondary corrosion of the silver, and the combination of this apical leakage and the coronal leakage from the old crowns was the cause of silver point failures. Anyway, today's case is that of a patient with a silver point treated tooth number five under an old crown. The patient does not recall when the root canal or the crown were done. His chief complaint is occasional pain and swelling in this area with the presence of a gum boil adjacent to the right premolar tooth. Clinical examination shows a sinus tract on the buccal aspect of tooth number five that traces the periapical lesion around that tooth. An angle radiograph shows the presence of two separate civil points in this tooth. The patient was referred for apicoectomy to address the sinus tract and the infection. Although surgical apicoectomy in this case is the much easier option, it would be a poor treatment choice since the cause of failure in old silver points is invariably coronal leakage. And as we know, canal recontamination due to coronal leakage should never be addressed with an apicoectomy. Retrofilling the apex of a tooth with chronic uh, coronal leakage is like placing a lid on a garbage can. You must address the cause of the disease process with cleaning the entire root canal uh, system and placing a new and improved crown in such teeth. So we proceeded to treat this tooth with a non-surgical retreatment uh, approach. Now, removal of the existing crown uh, for the retreatment would be ideal as it allows easier access to the silver point. But since a provisional crown was not readily available, if we were to remove the, uh, the current crown, we elected to retreat the silver point through the crown as although it is more difficult uh, access-wise and it would require high magnification and, illum and illumination as well as microsurgical techniques. So the plan was the following. A relatively liberal access was to be made through the top of the tooth in order to expose the silver points. As soon as the points were exposed, all efforts would be directed towards providing a purchasing point and relieve the handles from the surrounding core material, thus allowing room to grab each silver point and pull them out of its, the, their corresponding canal. It's crucial that the cutting be done carefully to avoid damage to the silver point handles accidentally. Silver is a very soft metal and this mistake would be very costly as the removal of, the, uh, of, a, of a silver point is far more difficult without the handle as it is if the handles were kept intact. Therefore, following anesthesia and isolation, access was made through the crown uh, aspect of the tooth and the small round burr was used with copious amount of water to shave off the porcelain trying to keep the porcelain cool to avoid fracture. Once the metal coping was reached a cross-cut fissure burr was used to access through the metal and into the underlying core. Very soon after the entering the core the cross section of each silver point could be seen in the access opening. Once the silver points were visualized under the microscope a small pear-shaped fissure burr was used to cut the core around the silver points. Here having a very steady hand is really useful as the smallest move will cut the silver points 